Ladies and gentlemen, the 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry, and Fort Drum change of command ceremony will begin momentarily. Good morning, ladies, gentlemen, and distinguished guests. On behalf of our presiding officer for today's ceremony, the Deputy Commanding General for United States Army Forces Command, Lieutenant General Paul T. Calvert, welcome to the change of command ceremony at which the Commanding General of the 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry, and Fort Drum Major General Promotable Milford H. Beagle Jr. will relinquish command to Major General Gregory K. Anderson. Among our distinguished guests for today's ceremony are the Deputy Commanding General, United States Army Forces Command, Lieutenant General Paul T. Calvert, the Commanding General, 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry, and Fort Drum, Major General Promotable Milford H. Beagle Jr. and his wife Pam. The incoming Commanding General of the 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry, and Fort Drum, Major General Gregory K. Anderson, his wife Lou, and sons Jaeger, Neil, Wesley, and the rest of the Anderson family. The Commanding General of the 42nd Infantry Division, Major General Thomas Spencer. The civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Joe Butler. Major General Retired. Robert Kosolke, the Command Sergeant Major of the 18th Airborne Corps and Fort Bragg, Command Sergeant Major Thomas Holland, the Command Sergeant Major of the 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry and Fort Drum, Command Sergeant Major Nima Mobar and his wife Candy, the Deputy Commanding General for Operations of the 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry and Fort Drum, Brigadier General Jason Curl and his wife Becky. The Deputy Commanding General of the 42nd Infantry Division, Brigadier General Jack James. The Deputy Commanding Officer for Support, 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry, and Fort Drum, Colonel Matthew Brayman. The Chief of Staff of the 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry, and Fort Drum, Colonel Aaron Miller. New York State Senator, the Honorable Patty Ritchie. From the office of Congresswoman Elise Stefanik, Regional Director Mary Jo Richards, Assemblyman Mark Walzik, the Mayor of Watertown, Mayor Jeff Smith, the Mayor of DeFerriot, Mayor ja Janet Zando, the Mayor of West Carthage, Mayor Scott Berto, the Garrison Commander, United States Army Garrison, Fort Drum, Colonel James Zacchino and his wife, Maria. Deputy to the Commander, United States Army Garrison, Fort Drum, Eric Wagnar. The Command Sergeant Major, United States Army Garrison, Fort Drum, Command Sergeant Major, Shelley Jenkins and his wife, Melinda. The Chairman of the Board of Legislators, Jefferson County, the Honorable Bill Johnson. From the Board of Legislators, Jefferson County, the Honorable Scott Gray. County Administrator for Jefferson County, Mr. Robert Hageman. The County Manager for Lewis County, Mr. Ryan Peach. Men and Women of the Mountain and Lady of the Mountain, Mrs. Barbara Weber. And to our many community and North Country leaders that range across a vast arena of support from the surrounding villages to our hospitals and our schools, to the supporting of our soldiers, civilians and families and veterans, through state and local organizations, we could not do it without your dedication and tremendous support. And finally, to the brigade and battalion commanders, Command Sergeants Major, and the men of the 10th Mountain Division, thank you for taking time out of your day to attend. At this time, Mrs. Pam Beagle is being presented a bouquet of flowers, thanking her for all her support and dedication to the soldiers and families of the 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry, and Fort Drum. These flowers signify the bonds of loyalty and affection between the soldiers and their families and signify our sorrow at their departure from the unit. Also, Mrs. Luzane Anderson is receiving a bouquet of flowers welcoming her to the 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry, and Fort Drum. These flowers signify new beginnings and symbolize her arrival to the unit. In time, Luzane's rosebuds will blossom, as will her relationship with the soldiers and their families. Major General Anderson's sons, Jaeger, Neil, and Wesley, are all receiving a 10th Mountain Division coin, welcoming them to the division as well. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Matthew Atkins. I invite you to pray with me. Father in heaven, we are privileged soldiers, families, and friends of the Mountain Division to participate in this moment as a connected family, in large part because of the grace that you've given to us in the leadership of General and Pam Beagle. We witness this morning that they have loved and led us with profound devotion, and it has been our joy to serve in this command where leadership is defined by selfless service, where honor is manifest in honorable conduct toward every member of the team, and where love for every soldier is the condition of leadership, a place where people matter more than program. How uniquely blessed we have been, and no doubt will continue to be. Living God as Major General and Lou Anderson assume this stewardship Assure them that your resources always accompany your calling. Bless him such that he will continually merit the confidence of his commanders, the fearsome loyalty of his soldiers, the esteem of his family, and most significantly, your divine approval. And once more we say, some trust in chariots and some in horses. We trust in the name of the Lord our God. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. In a moment, the adjutant will direct sound attention and our ceremony will begin. In front of you today are the Brigade and Battalion Commanders, Command Sergeants Major, and Colors of the 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry, and Fort Drum. Represented from left to right, they are the 10th Mountain Division Band, the 7th Brigade Engineer Battalion, Hammer, 2nd Brigade Combat Team, Commandos, 3rd Brigade Combat Team, Patriots, 10th Mountain Division Artillery, Mountain Thunder, the 10th Mountain Division Color Guard, 10th Combat Aviation Brigade, Falcons. 10th Mountain Division Sustainment Brigade, Mule Skinners. Fort Drum Garrison, Fort Drum Medical Department Activity, and Fort Drum Dental Activity. As you may have noticed, the colors of our 1st Brigade Combat Team are absent from our ranks today. The colors of the Warrior Brigade are currently forward on a deployment in support of Operation Inherent Resolve and Operation New Normal. In its stead, stand the colors of the 7th Brigade Engineer Battalion as they are charged with being the senior command within the brigade for Warrior Maine. The 10th Mountain Division Band is under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer 2, Ryan Knight. The drum major for today's ceremony is Staff Sergeant Michael Brown. The song played during the sound off sequence is Queen City. This tradition traces its roots to the time of Roman legions who would parade before the citizens before going forth to battle. At the end of their march, the band will sound off with three chords that represent the three cheers given to inspire the troops. Now, the 10th Mountain Division Band salutes the formation and will end with the three cheers.
the commander of troops for today's ceremony is the chief of staff of the 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry, and Fort Drum, Colonel Aaron Miller. The reviewing party for today's ceremony is composed of the Deputy Commanding General, United States Army Forces Command, Lieutenant General Paul T. Calvert, Major General Promotable Milford H. Beagle Jr., and Major General Gregory K. Anderson. Honors originated as musical fanfare and later a gun salute was added. The combination of the two now constitutes military honors. The custom of announcing royalty and heads of state with trumpets or drum rolls had its origins in England. Gun salutes may be traced back to a period when it took a long time to reload guns. Firing your guns meant you were no longer a threat. In 1875, the United States adopted 21 guns for the international salute, and that number is currently used as honors for all dignitaries of rank equivalent to the president, with the number of rounds decreasing with the rank of the recipient to be honored. Today's honors that Lieutenant General Calvert would normally be given have instead been deferred to the men and women of the 10th Mountain Division. They consist of three musical ruffles and flourishes and a 15-round gun salute. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the rendering of honors. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen please, be seated. please be seated. At this time, Captain Derogatis is presenting a ceremonial brass round to Major General Beagle for all his dedication to the division.
Almost. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join us for the playing of the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Key to the change of command is the passing of the unit's colors. These colors represent not only the heritage and history of the unit, but also the unity and loyalty of its soldiers. Since the early days of warfare, colors have served as the talisman of unit identity. The flag was symbolic. It helped units develop a sense of pride and esprit de corps as well as serving the more practical purpose of marking the location of the commander and providing a rallying point for soldiers during the smoke and chaos of battle. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority, representing his responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, so are the colors. The custodian of the colors is the command sergeant major as the senior enlisted soldier in the unit and principal advisor to the commander. The passing of the colors symbolizes the transfer of command responsibility and authority. The ceremony begins as Command Sergeant Major Mobar passes the colors to Major General Beagle for the last time. Major General Beagle will then pass the colors to Lieutenant General Calvert, thereby relinquishing his responsibility and authority. Lieutenant General Calvert will then pass the colors to Major General Anderson, charging the new commander with the same responsibilities and authority. By authority of paragraph 2-5, Army Regulation 600-20, the undersigned assumes command of the 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry and Fort Drum, effective 9 September 2022, signed Gregory K. Anderson, Major General, commanding. Major General Anderson then returns the colors to Command Sergeant Major Mobar, charging him with maintaining his symbol of command. Ladies and gentlemen, the Deputy Commanding General, United States Army Forces Command, Lieutenant General Paul Calvert. Thank you, sir. Well, my goodness, what a fantastic sight out there in front of us. So before we get going here, uh, how about a big round of applause for the formation on the field and all that they represent. The band, salute battery, color guard, color bears out there on the field. 
and everyone who had a hand in making today possible, please. Absolutely superb. Well, good morning to everyone. What a fantastic day to be in the North Country. And I'm truly honored to be a part of this ceremony that signifies the transfer of command authority between two outstanding leaders. General Pappas, the Force Com Commander, and Lieutenant General Donahue, the 18th Airborne Commander, send their regards and appreciation to the entire 10th Mountain Division as well as the Fort Drum team for all that you do for the nation. And they also send their sincere thanks to both the Beagle and Anderson families for the sacrifices that you all continue to make through your selfless service. Up front, I'd like to welcome all of our distinguished guests, General Officers and Command Sergeant Majors, active and retired both, Department of the Army civilians, family members and soldiers in attendance. Your presence honors the division and both the Beagle and the Anderson families. Please know that you have my personal thanks. I'd also like to give a special welcome to the Beagle and Anderson family and friends who are both here and virtually linked in. I know Beags, Pam, Greg, and Lou are beyond grateful for all your love and support. So I hope you took the time as the ceremony was progressing to read the history of this division that is in your program. It's very well laid out. I would submit to you that our nation knows exactly who the Mountain Tough Division is because of its strong legacy of answering the nation's call beginning in World War II with continuance to this very day. Climb to glory. In May of 1941, Army Chief of Staff General George C. Marshall signed the cover page of the Army's newest doctrinal manual, FM 100-5, Operations. This manual served as the baseline doctrine for our Army, taking us into World War II. From this manual, I share the following passage. And if you want to find it, it's in Chapter 3 entitled Leadership. The combat value of a unit is determined in great measure by the soldierly qualities of its leaders and members and its will to fight. Outward marks of this combat value will be found in the setup and appearance of the men, in the condition, care, and maintenance of the weapons and equipment, and in the readiness of the unit for action. Superior combat value will offset numerical inferior inferiority. Superior leadership combined with superior combat value of troops constitutes a reliable basis for success in battle. Ladies and gentlemen, over the last 14 months, this division has clearly demonstrated superior combat value to the nation. It was evident in Kabul, Afghanistan, through the actions of the commando brigade, along with the aviation and MP formations that were at their side. During the Spartan Brigade deployment to Fort McCoy, combat training center rotations, cadet summer training support, a division warfighter, a great inspection by the Force Com headquarters. Thanks, Matt. The Waypoint 2030 Executive Working Forum held last month with the North Country community. The continuous war on excess property, quality of life initiatives, community support, and outreach programs. The 1st Brigade's ongoing deployment to both Iraq and Syria in support of Operation Inherent Resolve, and the list goes on and on and on. Now, folks, it is clear that the successes realized by this division and the installation over the last 14 months don't happen without the hard work of soldiers, civilians, and leaders at Echelon. But my experience tells me, and my personal observation of this great team has been validated, that a single steadying hand who provides purpose, direction, and motivation to drive positive outcomes was absolutely required. Biggs, your superior leadership, coupled with the superior combat value of this unit and installation 
has been the difference maker. The right leader at the right time. Your foresight, foresight, leadership during transitions, creative thought, active listening, inclusiveness, investments in people, and team play it was, is what makes you a superior leader and, if you, and you have been absolutely impressive to watch. Well done, and I look forward to serving at your side as you take over as the CAT commander. We have many days ahead of us to solve some tough Army problems, and I look forward to it. So ladies and gentlemen, as impressive as Beegs has been, equally so has been his wife of 31 years, Pam. She has fervently served Fort Drum families as a Soldier Family Readiness Group Senior Advisor and as a community member of the great North Country. She is a dedicated volunteer and undoubtedly expanded the reach of Fort Drum through diligent work with nonprofit organizations to provide community grants, generate funds for scholarships that serve our military families, and direct support to ACS programs in the Fort Drum USO. Pam, you make a made a heck of a difference, and I personally want to say thanks for the difference that you have made and your willingness to serve. And on a side note, as I told you earlier, Beeks can't do what he does. I know he is doing what he was called to do and what he loves to do, but your support and your love to him is what has enabled his success. So Team Beeks is truly a team. Thank you, my dear. To you and Beeks, we pray for a smooth transition going into Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, and we look forward to the difference that you're going to make across the entirety of the Leavenworth community. As we bid farewell to the Beagles, it is my pleasure to welcome Major General Greg Anderson and his wife Lou back to Fort Drum. Greg brings with him a wealth of operational experience, having served in conventional special operations and joint commands. He is also no stranger to the 10th Mountain Division, having commanded the Catamounts as a lieutenant colonel in Afghanistan and having served as the deputy commanding general for support here in this very division. Greg is a known and respected leader across our force, and General Pappas, Lieutenant General Donahue, and myself have the utmost trust, faith, and confidence in his abilities. Greg, Beegs has built a strong foundation for you to build upon, and we look forward to the new heights you will lead the division to. On behalf of the entirety of Forces Command, congratulations to you and Lou, and we look forward to the difference that you all will make as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been up here long enough. I want to thank you again for being here today and for your continued support to the Front Fort Drum community and the mighty 10th Mountain Division. God bless you all. Climb to glory. Freedom's Guardian. Thank you, General Calvert. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Milford H. Beagle, Jr. We had a wardrobe malfunction just before coming up here, but, but thank you for that. I don't know what was put on me, but thank you anyway. So good morning to everybody. Good morning. This is going to be a little bit tough. The, um, if I pause or if I stop, you got to understand the cough drops that I take and the eye drops that I use are known to cause a reaction <laughs> to emotion. So if I stop or I pause, my wife gave me her handkerchief, it's going to be okay. To the leaders and the soldiers on the field, rest. You all know what that means. I'm not going to be that long, but shake it out, do whatever, and then go back to a parade rest when I'm done. But today is truly bittersweet for me and Pam. And to say that is bittersweet is an understatement. A little bit over a year ago, we were in shock and disbelief that we would be back here in this division and in the North Country. And after leaving the first time, we always remained a little bit hopeful that we would return. But being honest with ourselves, we knew the odds of me commanding a division, let alone the division that we truly love, were slim. In a lot of cases, slim and none. To be precise, as a two-star general 
the chances of you commanding a division is 8%. There's 11 to 1 odds that you will command the division of your choice. So to consider ourselves blessed and fortunate is truly an understatement. Sir, thank you for your kind remarks and praise. Could somebody do something with this feedback? Let me give you this. And I appreciate you being here on behalf of General Pappas and General Donahue. It truly means a lot. And I know you, you always take these for the team as the deputy. So it truly, truly means a lot. I'm mindful of the time and the fact that I only have a few minutes to relay my thanks and appreciation for this team, for the leaders, the soldiers you see on the field in this community. On a day like today, I'm also reminded that words in a speech really matter. Because I gave a speech not long ago, and after that speech, a little boy came up to me and gave me a dollar. And I said, little man, what is that dollar for? He said, as you were speaking, my dad said, you're the poorest speaker he's ever seen. <laughs> so I wanted to share with you some of my allowance money so you don't have to be so poor. Well, today, I don't want anybody's allowance money or your lunch money. I will be brief and I will be gone and we'll get through this. But protocol has already been established. But that does not prevent me from thanking and recognizing some key people and teams this morning. And if I forget to name you by name, charge it to my head and not to my heart. I want to recognize our distinguished guests and we have so many that are here today. My fellow general officers, our community teammates, the soldiers here, our officers, our non-commissioned officers, and our warrant officers. And I always thank our spouses. Our spouses give up more time that we cannot ever repay them for. I don't care how much we try, but thanks to all of our spouses that are here and our great civilian teammates. Our civilian teammates are truly our continuity and make everything run for this division and our army and many of those that are joining us out there virtually. Now here's where the cough drops and the eye drops start to kick in with those emotions. But most importantly to me, my lovely bride Pam, I thank her because of her love for me, this division, and our army. As the daughter of a command sergeant major, she is without question my biggest critic, and she does not spare the units or organizations that I'm a part of. She is always focused on making me and others around her better. This beautiful lady absolutely completes me, and she keeps me grounded. And it's funny, sir, you mentioned General George Marshall, because his wife said something very important once. And she talked about spouses being the tail of a kite. And what she meant by that, she said, if the, kite, if the tail of the kite is too heavy, that kite falls to the ground. If that tail is not just right, if it's too light, it will fly a devious course. But if that tail is well balanced, that kite will soar with ease. So honey, thank you for enabling me to soar with ease and this team. Many of our family and friends are watching virtually. Our media family has visited Fort Drum many, many times, but they know here that we have two seasons. We have eight months of winter and 4th of July. <laughs> but, so our family didn't make it here, and they said, we'll all just load up and we'll come out to Leavenworth and we'll get a twofer out there, which is all okay. But Pam and I truly feel like our family really is here. And one thing I often say is home is not a place. Home is a feeling. And we always feel at home and we have always felt at home here. To the point, Pam never changed her New York State license plates over the last three and a half years. We thought always about Fort Drum and the 10th Mountain Division. And so as stated, today is about thanks and appreciation. And I'll speed up just a little bit, but I do want to thank General Carrilla, our former Corps Commander, currently CENTCOM Commander, General Donahue, our current 18th Airborne Corps Commander, for being warfighters that they are and for being great leaders. And Commanders who allowed commanders to command. I've only known one core SAR major in this job, and that's SAR Major Holland. And I'm grateful not only for the fact that he advises the core commander, but he also advises the division commanders. And SAR Major has been a great opportunity to serve alongside you, and I really appreciate everything you've done for me, SAR Major, and this division. All three of them always ask, what help do you need and what can I do to help? All three of them, always, guaranteed. They are true leaders and true war fighters. And I want to thank two tremendous Mountain Sevens, Command Sergeant Major Tarinas and Mobar. Tarinas did a lot of heavy lifting to keep this team together, to keep them focused, and to keep them relevant. And Sergeant Major Mobar is the perfect fit to keep this team focused on the next climb to come and to take care of soldiers and families 
exactly the way they deserve. We are fortunate for the outstanding brigade commanders that we've had here. Harris, Dakota, who's still with the team but deployed, as you heard. McIntosh, Hardman, Bearfield, Miller, Mapes, Zucchino, Cyril. You couldn't assemble a better team if you tried. But in this division, we should play the lottery. Because you see, those that are out there today, Wentz, Getke, Clyde, Barnett, and Jackson, and the formations that they lead always get results. And they lead a team of teams. And our brigade level sergeant majors are even better. We still have much of that original crew with us today. And it's a group that I love to death and I truly admire them. Ekstrom, Goodhart, Sadler, Lopez, Ellsbury, Jenkins, Price, and the newest addition to the team, Sergeant Major Siglock. And no team is complete without a great chief of staff, and we've had two, Mike Scarpula and Aaron Miller. No division commander in their right mind would change chiefs of staff before a division warfighter. But when you have the level of 06 talent that we have here in the division, that's an easy call all day. And to our deputy commanders and their spouses, Jason and Becky Curl, Lori and Tom Robinson and Matt Brayman, I never lost any sleep at night having three deputies like that. And thank you to my aides, Colin, Sean, and Rosie. And no, in the last 14 months, we didn't have a firing frenzy. They all did their thing at the right time, at the right place. To my driver, Sergeant Strawn, to my enlisted aide, Sergeant Stevens, and most importantly, to the glue of the command group, Ms. Tammy McCabe. Thank you all for making hard days easy and every day a great deal of fun. And I truly appreciate you more than you know. We'd be here all day if I mentioned the staff by name, but I'll simply say that our staff is as gifted as they come, and they consistently pursue excellence every single day. They are the best teammates and team players that I've ever seen. And no installation is great without a great garrison. And we truly have a first class garrison and it shows. This team has produced installation readiness, number one installation. The many soldiers and civilians in our garrison made the impossible possible every single day. And as stated, we have a ton of family here. My brothers, my sisters, mom, cousins, They've been here the entire time. Jeff Smith, Joe Butler, Scott Gray, Scott Berto. If I had brothers like that growing up, we'd have been in a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> but then there's mom, Miss Barb Weber. She is mama to everybody. I don't think we would have gotten in, in more trouble with her as mom, but she's been mom to all of us. Sheriff Colleen O'Neill and Ty Stone, Tom and Irene Carmen. Now this list could easily go on but the more I named, the more you would wonder, is that a functional family or a dysfunctional family? <laughs> but I assure you that if anyone here could select family members, the names that I name and the names of others that are here with us today would be on that short list. There's no doubt in my mind. And as I wrap up my final points, we often refer to this division as blue collar. It is the image of the hard hat and the lunch pail that comes to mind. It is the mentality and the mountain tough mantra that make us unique. There are a multitude of things that you do not question when it comes to the 10th Mountain Division. You can never question our readiness or our ability to do whatever our army or our nation needs us to do. As of today, we have soldiers in nine different countries around the globe. Most notably, our first brigade is in Iraq, Syria, and Kuwait. And we pray for all of their safe return home. We were there, as you heard, as we closed the Afghanistan chapter of 20 plus years of war. We were there in the beginning of operations in Europe. We were one of the first to send equipment to Ukraine. And oh, by the way, this was in 96 hours over Easter weekend. It all showed up there 100% ready and operational. It is impossible to question this team's commitment to excellence. A former Mountain Six by the name of Pyatt once said, if all you do as a commander is ask for more resources, you're not helpful. He also said readiness is not about, is about what you have, not what you don't have. Many have watched this team do more with less and do more with what is on hand than any other. I always like to say this team does not wring their hands. They roll up their sleeves and they get after it. From boasting the highest cyber readiness score in the United States and OCONUS in the Army, to having the highest retention in the 18th Airborne Corps and the third highest in the Army. This is a testament to the leaders that you see in front of you today. It is simply amazing. 
and it has truly been an honor to watch this team step into the ring every single day. Similar to Rocky Balboa. Yes, I'm using Rocky in my speech. <laughs> you can count this team down, but you would never, ever count this team out. Lieutenant General Donahue once described our team as super tough, uber fit, brilliant in the basics, and could thrive in privation. I will take that compliment for this team all day. Lastly, you simply can't question the North Country's loyalty and commitment to the success of Fort Drum and the 10th Mountain Division. Where there is a need, this community will provide. Where there is no way, this community will find one or make one. I wanna thank all of our community partners and family for the genuine love and appreciation that you've shown for this division and this installation. This team and this community has added one more great chapter to the legacy of the division. And as stated by Daniel Webster, who was a former Secretary of War in 1800, he said there's always room at the top. This team ensured that we always kept moving and we always created room at the top. We have completed this leg of the climb and there are many more summits are waiting. And I couldn't think of a better leader to lead to the next, this next leg of the climb than Greg Anderson and Lou. Greg, you're even more familiar with this team in the North Country than I could ever hope to be. So I know the team is in great hands. Pam and I wish you and Lou all the best in command. Thank you all for your time today and indulging me for an extended time. I truly appreciate it. We love you. We will miss you. Every single one of you. Winning matters. Freedom's guardians. Sky dragons. Climb to glory. Thank you, General Beagle. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce for the first time the Commanding General of the 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry and Fort Drum, Major General Gregory K. Anderson. Hey, to, uh, to the team out there, uh, Commander's Colors and uh, Color Guards, go ahead, maintain a position of rest. General Calvert, Senator Ritchie, Mr. Butler, Major General Promotable Beagle, distinguished guests and army leaders, to our mighty 10th Mountain soldiers and their families, and to our venerable friends and neighbors from our North Country community, thank you for the time and leadership and efforts that made this transition and this ceremony an exceptional event for everyone. To my family, Luzane, Jaeger, Neil, and Wesley, to my mom and my pop, to my brother Brian and your amazing family, I see Emily, Cynthia, Helena, I see Jaden. Thank you for supporting me and loving me through all the years of hardship, separation, stress, and challenge that Army life brings. I love you all and would not have been ever been able to rise to this opportunity without you. You continue to inspire me to give and to serve. To two of my great mentors who are here, Friends and confidence and comrades, Command Sergeant Major Retired Bernie Felino and Command Sergeant Major Retired Terry Sutton, thank you for saving me from myself and teaching me to love our profession and to believe in trusting our great soldiers to rise to any challenge and meet and then exceed all expectations. I owe you both a debt of gratitude that I can only pay by serving our formations the way you taught me. To my West Point classmates from the class of 91, you honor me and my family with your presence today and your friendship has been something I could always rally behind for so many years. I hope to live up uh, to our great class motto the way you have, for, uh, you have done in your example, duty shall be done. I'm filled with gratitude and humility to have been given another opportunity to serve soldiers and families and to do so in a division and a community that I've grown to love over the years. I've been given so much by this division and the North Country, and I fully recognize that now I've been just given another incredible gift, the opportunity to actually pay back now all that was given to me and an opportunity I fully intend to take advantage of. So much has changed in the three years since I was last assigned to the 10th Mountain Division when we were a unit 
focused on Afghanistan and Iraq. During the past three years, as I served on joint commands at both CENTCOM and AFRICOM, I've seen the world become more dangerous and our potential adversaries become more aggressive, emboldened, and capable. The need for a strong 10th Mountain Division that is ready for any contingency or disaster is as pressing now as it's ever been. As such, I'm grateful for the direction the Army has set to get us ready for the unknown, for the resources our Congress and leadership have garnered for us, and the support we've received for our community and our families. And I'm also thankful for the leadership Major General Beagle has provided during his command to get us ready for what lies ahead. Our great division is set up well. In the next chapter of work that lies ahead, we're, we're on path for it. Thank you, Beags and Pam, for everything that you've done here to build a team and a climate and a community that everyone is proud of. And thank you for the incredibly warm welcome and transition that you have provided to Lou and me. I'm honored to follow in your footsteps and move our division to the next summit. And the Army nailed it with your promotion and selection for command of our Combined Arms Center. Fair winds and following seas to you both as you both take on the next mission for our Army. The Army has tasked us with building a division to fight and win against a full spectrum of threats with an uncertain future in what promises to be not just a complex environment but likely a hostile environment. My experiences over the years have taught me that there are three pillars we must account for when getting a unit ready for this type of uncertainty and scenario. First, we must develop a, a mastery of basic skills to be able to perform our tasks without conscious thought. Secondly, we must build cohesive teams at all echelons, teams that believe and commit to one another and will not bend in duress. Thirdly, we must develop our leaders to think critically and act independently, to see, to create, and then seize these opportunities. As such, our 10th Mountain Division and Fort Drum must always strive to remain an empowered team of offensive-minded, self-reliant, innovative, and thinking professionals. Mountain soldiers, you are charged to be masters of your craft, confident in your formation, and to possess discipline inspired by commitment to a greater purpose and belief in one another. Mountain soldiers are the standard bearers for the profession of arms, mentally and physically ready to attack and win any challenge tonight. About three weeks ago, as I transitioned out of my job in Germany, I had the opportunity to hike along the Rhine River and visit some of the sites where our army fought its way across the Rhine River to finish off World War II. I started my hike at a town called Remagen, Germany place where the army seized the last bridge standing on the river to get our forces across and turn the German defenses on the Rhine River. It was an operational victory. What I didn't appreciate at the time was how this bridge was captured. And it's part and parcel to how the 10th Mountain Division does business. A young lieutenant from the town of West Point, Nebraska, Joseph Heinz Timmerman and his reconnaissance troop unexpectedly fell upon a stand, the last standing bridge that the Germans had prepared to destroy but had not destroyed. Seeing the opportunity before him and the need to act fast, he and his troops sprang in action without orders or additional resources. And they got to the far side and immediately cut the demolition wires, dug in and, and fought off the initial German counterattacks. And then he called back to hire to let him know what he had done. That lieutenant and his troops won the day. Despite unexpected and weird circumstances, he trusted his team and his instincts and acted. Committed and courageous, they made the bold move to win the day and bring about a greater end. A lieutenant and his NCOs, believing in one another with real confidence to act and create a better future. This is the anecdote for the summit we are shooting for in the 10th Mountain. In order to reach this summit, we will need the continued support and partnership of our great installation at Fort Drum and our North Country neighbors as much as we've ever needed you all before. Because change, transition, and preparation for uncertainty only happens when we have certainty in the foundation of our home base, certainty and predictability for our unit and our families and for our resources. I look forward to growing and strengthening one of the true treasures of our division in this Army, and that is a relationship we have here in the North Country with our dear friends and the amazing, unique opportunities we have at this special place called Fort Drum. 
to our mountain soldiers and mountain families, I cannot express my gratitude adequately enough for the service and sacrifice each of you make every day for our Army and nation. You are the heart of this division, and I'm honored to stand by you in formation once more. I will close with one more thought on who we are and where we need to go. 10th Mountain Division was created in 1943 to solve problems, innovate, develop tools, doctrine, and tactics for fighting in the mountains. Something that the Army desperately needed but did not have at that time. Our division's legacy comes from hunters, skiers, outdoorsmen, mountaineers, climbers, and others that assembled from all walks of life to solve a pressing need. In many cases, they built with their own hands the tools they needed to overcome the mountain that they were tasked to climb. Nearly 80 years later, we are being charged again by our Army with another mountain to climb. Develop, innovate, create, and build ways to defeat the threats we are going to face, and to do so on a foundation of mental and physical toughness and spiritual balance. We will always draw strength and inspiration from our forebears, but make no mistake, the climb is ours to make, and it's a climb we will make as a team and one we readily accept. Thank you all for celebrating our division and community and for helping mark this transition in our division's history. Climb to glory. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the 10th Mountain Division song and remain standing for the Army song. The words to these songs are located on the back of your program.
You're the top. Take charge of the division. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending today's 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry and Fort Drum Change of Command Ceremony. Climb to glory.